Mycenae, Pylos, Tyrins, Lolcus, Orchomenos, Thebes, Athens, Sparta. Some you might recognize, others not so much. In their day, each one was a mighty citadel of old. Hilltop fortresses, complete with palaces, walls, immense cyclopean masonry, and pillared halls, ruled over by warrior lords and kings. According to the poet Homer, writer of the Iliad and the Odyssey, traditionally said to have lived sometime during the 7th or 8th centuries BC, it was from these imposing capitals that the great heroes of old rode forth to battle. Crossing over the sea on black-sailed ships, under the orders of the great king Agamemnon. Plunder and glory on their minds. Their destination, the city of Troy. For the builders of these impressive archaeological sites, according to Homer at least, numbered in their ranks Achilles the undefeated, Menelaus of Sparta, the wily Odysseus, Ajax the strong, and Nestor the old. Warrior lords said to have lived some 500 years before the time of Homer. Dominating mainland Greece and the Aegean Sea from around 1600 to 1200 BC. Just before the collapse of their world to outside invasion and the breakdown of an interconnected ocean-spanning trade system. Their stories said to have been passed down by oral tradition writing having been forgotten during a dark age. For much of history, the story seemed too good to be true. The work of a poet living at the end of an illiterate dark age with an overactive imagination. So much so that when Greek travellers walked through the great halls and still standing walls of the ancients just a few centuries later, they overwhelmingly came to the conclusion that the ruins must have been the work of giants. A race of one-eyed cyclopses. Such was the gulf between these ancient works and those of the approaching classical world. The idea became so widespread that those Bronze Age people of Greece were often portrayed as an extinct, dead people, having been replaced by Dorian invaders during the fires of civil war and societal upheaval in the centuries following the worldwide calamity known as the Late Bronze Age Collapse. Later, archaeology confirmed that in those dark days, in a short space of time, every single Mycenaean citadel had been burned. As far as the story went, their inhabitants killed, or at least scattered to the winds, replaced by the invading Dorian Greeks. As time went on, until relatively recently, the very concept that these Bronze Age predecessors had been Greek-speaking at all fell out of popular use. Now, in the 21st century, DNA science is completely revolutionising how we view the past, definitively showing that the Mycenaeans of old were Greek after all. 
modern people of the peninsula and the Greek islands very much being directly descended from these builders of old. Let's take a look. When Heinrich Schliemann began digging at Mycenae in 1876, almost immediately, astonishingly ornate relics from the ancient past began to be pulled out of the ground. A series of so-called shaft tombs containing the remains and grave goods of Bronze Age kings laid to rest more than 3,000 years before. Almost immediately being hailed as one of the greatest discoveries of the age. In the previous decades, Schliemann, a self-made businessman turned amateur archaeologist, had gained fame by claiming to have discovered the location of the fabled city of Troy, at the ancient tell of Hisalik on the Dardanelles Peninsula. For the first time, the heroes of the Trojan War seemed within reach. Homer's story potentially more than just a myth. Though the famous mask of Agamemnon was later proved to have been buried several hundreds of years before the supposed date of the Trojan War, just prior to the Late Bronze Age collapse in the 13th century BC, the floodgates opened up nonetheless for archaeologists to follow in Schliemann's footsteps. Enter Arthur Evans, an Englishman from a family of scholars. On the cusp of the 20th century, Evans travelled to the Ottoman-held island of Crete, with archaeology on his mind. Over the next few years, Evans and his team excavated the vast labyrinthine palace that would come to be known as Knossos. Quickly associating the site with the fabled King Minos of myth, and the maze of the Minotaur. For the first time, this story too began to be seen as potentially more than just myth. During excavations, some 3,000 clay tablets were unearthed, written in two indecipherable scripts, Linear A and Linear B. Linear A, still undeciphered today, is generally seen as a continuation of a form of Phoenician writing. Perhaps a form of Minoan writing unique to the island. Then Linear B began showing up at Mycenaean sites on the mainland. At Pylos, Thebes, Tiryns, and the mighty Mycenae itself. This was an administrative court writing system likely reserved for elites. When finally deciphered in the 1950s, it was definitively shown that Linear B was Greek, the earliest form found anywhere. But what of the Mycenaeans themselves? Later classical Greeks saw their roots amongst warlike tribes of Dorian Greeks, said to have swept down through the peninsula during the Dark Age following the Bronze Age collapse. But how true is this origin story? If the Greek language survived the Dark Age, then surely some of its people must have done too. In the 21st century, DNA science is allowing archaeologists a unique new window into the past. As long as the remains of the dead can be found, they can be tested, their DNA profiles compared to those of the present. Thankfully for us, the Mycenaeans laid their rulers to rest in tombs, many of which have been excavated. 
One of the latest studies carried out analyzed the genes of 19 individuals across various Mycenaean sites, comparing 1.2 million letters of genetic code to those of 334 individuals from today. One revelation, perhaps not surprising, was the close genetic relationships between Mycenaeans of the mainland and the Minoans of Crete, who flourished from around 2000 to 1400 BC, at which point they seem to have adopted Mycenaean culture, according to one argument, evidence of a conquest from the Greek mainland. Individuals from both cultures carried genes for brown hair and brown eyes. Again, not much of a surprise, given the representations on their frescoes and pottery. Crucially, the majority of their DNA came from Neolithic farmers originating in Anatolia many thousands of years before. This genetic overlap between Mycenaeans and Minoans is finally beginning to put to rest theories of mass migrating Minoans and Dorian Greeks arriving from elsewhere en masse, suggesting that it was these ancient Bronze Age civilizations that laid the genetic groundwork for later peoples. According to Harvard population geneticist Yosef Lazaridis, any difference between the two civilizations suggests that after the Neolithic farmers, a second wave of people came to mainland Greece from Eastern Europe, yet were unable to reach the island of Crete. And in time, they became known as the Mycenaeans. Of course, much more work needs to be done, and the story will likely be rewritten many more times over the decades to come, as further advances in genetic science are made. But perhaps this small deviation could be evidence of chariot-riding Indo-European invaders from the steppe, long hypothesized to have invaded the region in the 3rd or 2nd millennium BC, bringing with them their Indo-European language and gods, establishing themselves as a hierarchical warrior elite ruling over a farming society on the plains below. Watch this space. I was actually supposed to go and visit the Mycenaean citadels earlier this year in April. If you're interested in this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe so you can see my travels when I'm finally able to get there. Thanks for watching anyway. Don't forget to like, share, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.